the tagline for uh, the talk came from the, uh, the piece that I wrote for The Economist. And uh, I've been asked about it, so I just wanted to tell you real quick what it actually is. Uh, this actually came from my then girlfriend, now wife. Uh, we both met at Imperial College in London, uh, a uh, science and technology focused university, uh, which is known for being predominantly male. So she said to be a woman at Imperial meant that the odds are good. Unfortunately, she said the, uh, the goods are odd. Um, <laughs> I mean, the, it's, it's useful in this context because there's no getting around it. The, the, the quantum world is a weird thing for people who don't know it intimately. It's a weird thing for people who do know it intimately. Um, and we'll, we'll come back to that. Um, I just kind of wanted to, to go over briefly why we're talking about this now. I think if you're in the room, you already know all of this. Um, there is a crazy amount of growth in, in interest in funding from kind of all corners. Um, and I've been kind of covering uh, this, this space for a very long time, kind of in a piecemeal way. Um, but I have not seen, in, in my time, sort of 10 years covering it as a journalist, um, <clears throat> and a long time before that as a practicing scientist, kind of looking on with interest, this kind of, this coalescence of, of interest, of, of funding, of, of buzz, which you know is a, a benefit and uh, a risk in, it, in its way. And that, of course, brings out the, the speculators and the shovel sellers. I, I imagine everyone here has heard the, the story about how the people who really made the money um, in, in the gold rush in California were the ones who sold the pans and the shovels, um, but also uh, the people who financed those shovel selling businesses, the, the people who financed the, uh, the, the plots of land. So plenty of interest from that, that side, spurred by a lot of really incredible progress in the lab. This is not new stuff, um, but our ability to control these quantum systems and to think about how they might be used in the real world instead of to make science and nature papers has been truly astonishing. Like I say, I've been watching it for, for a long time. Um, the, 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 the slope of the curve has, has changed a lot. Um, and as it has done so, people have started thinking about, as we come to applications, speaking about uh, integrating with existing technologies, right? So if you have to build up an, uh, a brand new infrastructure, if you have to build um, a, an industry completely from scratch, that's a very, very daunting prospect. But you know, we hear about, for instance, uh, the integration of uh, solid state uh, qubits with existing semiconductor technology. We hear about quantum signals being sent down fibers that have already been laid. It looks like there's a lot of synergy to be had there, and that only kind of feeds back to the interest that we see at the top there. And here, I am deliberately provoking uh, one of the things that was uh, pulled up from my uh, piece in The Economist was the statement that I foolishly, but knowingly made, uh, that the, the remaining challenges of quantum technology are, are those of engineering rather than of science. Now, John Preskill, among others, pulled me up for this. Uh, Scott Aronson didn't like it either, but then again, I've never written a single thing that he liked top to bottom, so, so it goes. Um, I think what I meant to imply there um, is simply that, uh, again, for as long as I've been watching it anyway, these are no longer questions of what are the, uh, the potential showstoppers, the, the, the things that could bring this whole thing crashing down, the things uh, that we don't yet know uh, that would preclude this from being useful in a, in a really wide way. And I contend that those are largely gone. To say that the problems uh, that remain are engineering problems is not to say that we're almost there. Um, and look, I, I, I'm sure that people in the room will disagree with this still. I want you to. I think this is, a, is an important point to, to, to sort of focus on. Um, so what is it? Um, this is the dangerous bit where I start talking about what it is and someone says, ha ha. Um, so I'm speaking in generalities. We know this already, tremendous unexplored opportunity. The truth is that it's not entirely clear, even to the experts, just how much the world could be changed by quantum computing what sorts of applications will be found, what sorts of businesses might be affected. Um, and with that comes an entirely new ecosystem. So not, not only the people who are going to make uh, the big computers themselves, but certainly the entire value chain that includes the bits that go into those. You have uh, businesses that don't yet know that, that they could be helped by this stuff. They need, there's a sort of growing, uh, growing sort of uh, niche for the, the, the middlemen who can explain it. Ah, I see what you're doing. I see how you, your logistics could be fixed, whatever it is. There are lots and lots and lots of little niches where plenty of people can feed, um, and these are yet to be found in a lot of cases. But, but it's obvious that you know, the, the prize here isn't just who can make a big and powerful quantum computer. I speak about these things, think about these things in terms of the much wider quantum technology more generally, quantum cryptography, sensors, software, the, the whole schmear. Um, and I, you know, I feel that a lot, of the, um, a lot of the coverage so far has been kind of very, very focused on the machine. What can the machine do? It can break RSA, oh cool, tell me more. Um, the, 
in thinking about all of those, those different uh, technologies that are kind of coming up together, they feed off each other. All of this stuff is just the manipulation of quantum information. Um, you know, whether it's a sensor, whether it's a quantum cryptography setup, um, it's, it's all uh, of, a, of a piece based on the same quantum rules, and progress in one will inevitably help in progress with the other. So again, these are all kind of parts of one big feedback loop um, that we need to be careful about talking too much about because here's what it isn't. It's not new. None of this stuff, none of the physics um, is anything new. This has been known about for decades. What we have uh, is a, a development of humanity's, scientists' ability to manipulate, to read out, to compute with, to use these quantum information systems that it used to be just impossibly hard to do and had to be done in labs that, you know, a handful of labs around the world. None of this is new. It's our ability that's new. Um, and the other, and I, I can't possibly stress this enough, it's not magic. The thing is, if we say that we don't know exactly what it can do, that's very tempting for people to imagine that we can do absolutely anything. Um, and we already know that there are certain classes of problems that will lend themselves to quantum computing. We don't know perhaps all of the classes. We don't know the best way to crack it. Some things that look too hard now may become easier in the, in the future and so on. But I would caution everyone and anyone, the entire world in fact, not to see this as some spooky weird thing that is going to, that is rooted in something that we don't understand, because we do. We haven't found quite the limits of it, but there's going to be some chicanery, right? There's going to be some people who try to sell you something quantum that isn't, and a, a fundamental understanding of that this is just another computing platform, a very powerful one, but not a magical one, I think is incredibly important. And of course, it's not ready yet. There's some tremendous buzz. Ooh, The Economist did a big cover piece about this. This is gonna be huge. There's gonna be products on shelves you know, next year. It's not, and we have to be realistic about that. Um, the, the promise is good, the slope of the curve has changed, the money is flowing in, but you know, we, we have to look at longer timescales, I think, than a lot of people understand when they think about, ah, there's a lot of interest in this technology. We've, we've become, accustomed to, become accustomed to technology developing in fundamentally different ways from this, because it involves academia so intimately. So briefly, what do we need yet? This is an incomplete list. This is kind of you know, one person's view, um, but I would be remiss as a journalist to say that you know, it doesn't hinge in large part on better understanding, right? To have people that think that it's absolutely magical um, is problematic. To have people think much more commonly, ah, well, this is quantum, right? This is physics. I failed physics in high school. Like, this is absolutely hopeless for me. Um, we need to convey as a community that this is understandable stuff. I contend that if you, you know, pull your phone out of your pocket and someone tells you in the most intimate detail exactly how it works and all about the solid state physics that's going on in there, probably blow even the minds in this room, right? But you don't need to know that. You reach into your pocket, you push buttons, you use various apps, you throw around uh, a vocabulary that would have once been limited to, you know, to the IT nerds of, of decades ago. We are comfortable with this stuff when it reaches product stage. It's important to say, you don't need to know all that stuff. You don't need to be scared of this stuff. Um, and that it's, you know, uh, and so it's kind of along the way, make people understand, again, that it's not magic, that it's not new physics, it's just this new way of, of dealing with things. Um, with that, kind of more on the uh, industrial side, how do you get the person in the street to understand what they've got? How can they understand that, I don't know, the, that this 50 qubit machine here is radically different from this 2,000 qubit machine I can buy right now? Um, how do I know when some paper comes out, when some news story comes out, what this sort of benchmarking is? What we don't have, as, um, as Alan Ho pointed out to me last week, um, standard computing pl platform, you know uh, you need three things, right? Memory, input, output, processor speeds, you've more or less characterized the system. We don't have that for quantum. We need that for quantum. Um, too long has the coverage kind of focused on, you know, one more qubit, right? Or one step closer to solving this particular catalysis problem or whatever it is. Um, and, and even further in industrial land is, is standards. I'm getting ahead of the game a little bit because you know, we don't have anything on the shelf yet, so we don't need to worry about this, but you don't want to wait until something is on the shelf to have these things in place. We need some sort of, you know, we need to think about the kind of kite mark, uh, a kind of industry understood, agreed uh, way to say, this is what we're saying it is and what experts in the field would all agree that it is. Um, and lastly, and easily most importantly, and most relevantly for the room that I'm standing in front of, um, is an understanding that I've, I've never seen in my limited time, never seen um, a, a field so, that so sort of intimately smashes together academics um, and, and industry. Um, we've become very accustomed to the idea of, oh, well, if there is a technology product that is not far from making it to market, all we gotta do 
get the best coders in the world, feed them loads of pizza, right? Just leave them in a room for like three months, boom, out comes a product. You know, we're a unicorn, fantastic. This is a fundamentally different um, technology, fundamentally different um, sort of intersection, um, and going to have to start rethinking uh, a lot of the, the sort of paradigms that have, have led the way with technology development so far. You know, academics have different priorities. They have different predilections. They have uh, strong thoughts about openness, about being able to tell their peers what they found, what they've done. Um, the you know, private equity world has timescales that are going to be, uh, you know, uh, that are likely to be um, somewhat in conflict, right? And there's a certain amount of flexibility that you're going to need to, to maintain because a bunch of coders in a room aren't going to solve this one. A bunch of coders in some rooms might solve some, some pieces of this, but, uh, but by and large, um, I think we've got a, a culture clash on our hands here. And it's very good to be in, in, in the room here as these things start to get worked out because there are going to be some people that understand this bottom point very, very well from the start aren't going to, to become disillusioned, are going to be mindful of, of, of falling in some unpleasant piece of the, the, the Gartner hype cycle. Um, and I, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to, to hearing everything we're gonna see. The kind of dispels some of these things that gets us all on the same page to make us understand that the, you know, the potential makes the difficulties and the waiting, as it inevitably will come, um, worthwhile. Because I think it's very clear to everybody that, uh, that, that the, power, the, the power of it is there. Um, which is a good enough time. How am I doing? Ha -ha. Um, point of order before I hand it over. Um, we've got a very packed schedule. Um, and everybody always says, oh, we really should keep to time. Uh, but I feel like I have to threaten you. Um, the best that I've heard um, is someone invoking the wrath of God. I will bring down the wrath of God if you don't keep to time. I wasn't able to arrange the wrath of God. So I'm instead going to use some shame. There's a, there's a clock here. I've got two and a half minutes left. I'm going to come in early. Nice. Um, just know this, I'm, I'm, I'm invoking shame instead of wrath. If someone runs over time, it's not that they don't know, they know they're watching the whole time. So please everyone, just in the interest of getting everything in and making sure everybody gets their chance to speak and we can get through what is a tremendous amount of material, try to keep to it. Um, and with that, I will hand over to, to Alan Ho.